recording. Hey guys and gals, it's Michael Lasco from Taxi. I uh, decided that I was going to do the questions and letters this month on a video because we've been getting such incredibly good response on all the videos we've been doing on Ustream. And truth be told, I hate to type. So this week, I'm going to, or this month for the transmitter, I'm going to read the letters and then give my response. First letter is from Polly Saxman. Dear Mr. Lasco, I recently followed your advice and went to your forum. Wow, you weren't kidding. What an awesome group of people who reside there. Not only are they the friendliest group of musicians I've yet to meet on the internet, they are by far the most knowledgeable and helpful. I've been posting some of my rough demos and getting feedback on how to fix my songs before I submit them to Taxi. As a result, my forward ratio has gone up and I have no doubt that my music has become much better from what I've learned from the forum members and the Taxi screeners. Thank you for everything, Polly Saxman. <sighs> Polly, I'm so glad that you listened. Uh, I always wonder when I tell people that uh, the forum is just incredible and, and it's such a plus to, to your taxi membership. And I always fear that most people go, oh yeah, I'll go there someday, but they never get around to it. So let your letter be evidence that it actually works and it's a great place and I'm really glad to hear that you're getting the results that I predicted. All right, and this next letter is from Albert Kleinberg. Michael, I think it's shameful that you make all that money from us on those $5 submission fees. Why don't you make the submission fee submissions free so I can make more of them and have more chances to get my music heard? I bet you don't print this in your <laughs> but you don't print this letter in your newsletter. <laughs> Albert Kleinberg. Well, Albert, you're right. I'm not going to print it in the newsletter. Um, I'm doing it on the video <laughs> instead. I, I just recently ran across a thread on another website where people were talking about how wealthy I'm getting on the $5 submission fees. Um, what they don't realize is that for every $5 that comes in with a submission fee, $5 goes right back out to pay the screeners. So if we bring in a million dollars a year in submission fees, we spend about a million dollars a year in paying the screeners to listen to your music. So, yeah, nobody's getting rich on those $5 bills. Um, why do you make the submissions free so I can make more of them and have more chances to get my music heard? That's exactly the point. You know, the submission fee was really designed to make people think twice about what they're sending. Um, if we didn't have a submission fee, which in-house we call the discouragement fee, we don't want people to send every single song they've got for every single uh, listing because if they did that, we would get a gazillion submissions in that would be, you know, like hip hop for country and pop for hip hop. And it's just, it would be a mess. So we actually uh, took the idea from uh, the LA Songwriters Showcase and I believe the National Academy of Songwriters. I think they had like a $10 submission fee for members and a $12 sub fee for non members. I thought that was a little steep, so I made it five bucks, and it worked out to be kind of a break-even thing. So there you go, Albert Kleinberg. Uh, hope that uh, answer satisfies you. And here's one from Mr. Daryl Bean. Dear Michael, you probably get e emails like this a lot, but just in case you didn't, I want to make sure that you got at least one from me. I really appreciate the honest, straightforward, but optimistic tone that you have in your emails to members. Thank you, Daryl. Um, anyone that's really reading uh, what you have to say can tell that no one's being offered a golden ticket by joining Taxi, but that the opportunity is there and that you and your staff are dedicated to making it as accessible as you can. Uh, it's nice to read about successful people who've taken a big risk and worked their way into the clear. <clears throat> the little wooden table anecdote was great encouragement to me. I hope someday I have a little old iMac story to share with others. Uh, in a day, in a day and age where there's a lot that a person get, can shoot, in a day and age when, <laughs> where there's a lot that can make a person pessimistic, it's nice to be inspired by a real person with a real life story to relate to. Thanks, Michael. Uh, regards and best wishes, Daryl Beam. Well, thanks, Daryl. Um, you know, part of the reason that I'm so passionate about Taxi is yes, I started the the company off a little wooden table with one computer. And uh, I, I wake up every day knowing that one person with a, a clear vision and a work ethic that uh, allows them to work 16 or 18 hours a day at what they're passionate about will result in success. And because I know that, 
I want everybody to experience what I've experienced. Uh, it's absolutely achievable, and I'm really heartened by the fact that you found uh, my story to be so inspirational. Thank you so much for writing in and letting me know that. And last but not least, we've got a letter here from Timothy, it's either Hones or Hanes, H-O-N-E-S, Timothy Hanes I'm going with. Um, hi Michael, first let me thank you for providing such a great service. There's nothing else like it out there. My question is regarding the recent, recent listings asking for songs that are either replacements for or sound-alikes. Um, can you please tell me why companies are looking for these and also how to make a song or track that sounds like something else but isn't a ripoff? Thank you for reading this and see you at the road rally, Timothy Haynes. All right, so here's why companies look for sound alikes. Um, ad agencies are pretty famous for it, uh, sometimes movie trailers. Um, generally, not record companies looking for exact sound alikes, but Frequently, uh, when an ad agency, somebody in the creative department, has an idea for doing an ad or having music in an ad that sounds like an artist that they personally love, it could be Steely Dan, it could be whoever, they happen to temp in a piece of music from an artist that they personally listen to and they love it and they get locked into that idea. But then when they go to license that music, uh, typically from a really big act like that, uh, it's either too much money to license it or the act just doesn't want their music in a commercial. Um, or it could be a film and TV project as well. But for whatever reason, the company that wants to license it can't license it from the big act. So they look for something else that is referred to as a sound alike. They want it to have maybe the same instrumentation. Uh, like if I were going to try and sound like Tom Petty, I would undoubtedly use a uh, Rickenbacker 12 string. Um, I might uh, animate my vocal phrasing in, in the same way that Tom Petty does it. Um, use the same kinds of background vocals and the same kind of tempo and energy. What you cannot or should not and cannot do, obviously, I hope this is obvious, is to rip off the artist that you're sounding like. Uh, you don't want to use any of their vocal ideas. You don't want to copy any of their lyrics. You don't want to copy any of their melodies. You want it to sound like uh, the song that you've done is maybe an outtake or something that they never released, that it could have been done by them. It certainly sounds and feels like them and has that same energy, but actually isn't them. Um, when they're looking for exact replacements, very often that's about energy. It may be the tempo of a song for a commercial and they like the way that the tempo works with the edits in the video. So they want something that matches the tempo and maybe matches the instrumentation um, and the overall sound, but uh, they're looking for something to replace something that already exists and they will frequently reference a song. Again, you have to be really careful. You don't want to rip off the artist. Um, it's ethically wrong. It'll land you in a courtroom on a copyright infringement suit. Just understand that it's the spirit, the feel, the tempo, the energy. All those things should go into it, but you do not want to rip off the artist in any way, shape, or form, nor do you want to rip off the song. So there you have it. Uh, thank you all for writing in this month. Uh, I hope you guys who are watching this like the uh, video edition better than the typewritten edition because it's a heck of a lot faster for yours truly to uh, talk than type. I'm a four-finger typist. That's all for now. Uh, see you in next month's transmitter. Thanks.